Hello and welcome to the big picture. The NDA government is completing one year in office early next week. In this last one year, how has the government fared in various sectors? The big picture will look at these different sectors over the coming days and analyze and discuss what has been achieved and what remains to be achieved. Today we will look at the social sector which for the last decade has seen significant growth in budgetary allocations apart from increased spending. This sector which has been one of the key areas to ensure equity as well as social justice and opportunities for the underclass has been under much discussion. The cuts in social sector spending during the last one year by the NDA government has come in for criticism. However, the government has been pointing out that with the increase in central allocations to the states following the Finance Commission recommendations, these shortfall, shortfalls will be made up. Today we will look at this sector and how it has fared and what needs to be done to improve performance in it. To discuss this, I have with me Dr. Sambit Patra, National Spokesperson of the BJP, Anjali Bardwaj, Secretary National Campaign for People's Right to Information, Biraj Patnaik, Social Activist and Principal Advisor to the Supreme Court Commissioner on Right to Food, and Nitin Sethi, Associate Editor, Business Standard. Welcome to all of you. Uh, Dr. Sambit Patra, the... Uh, if you look at the one of the major criticisms which your government has faced in this last one year, especially since the budget, is that you know you have made this drastic reduction in social sector spending. I would say you you in fact had answered the question while reading out the first sentence. The, the devolution that this the state, I mean the government has done towards the state is absolutely historic. I mean the 14th Finance Commission recommendation that the devolution to the states be increased by 10 percentage to 42 percentage and the government has agreed to it. Definitely with the enriched contribution from the centre, the state would now be working in tandem. So I, I believe there is not such kind of reduction that we are talking about. There are no reductions according no. to you. Viraj? No. The, look, there is some truth in what Sambit is saying. But if you look at the overall picture, there is a drastic reduction. Schemes have been divided into three categories. One set of schemes which are being shut down, like BRGF, no allocation required. So that's going to have a negative impact. Let's leave that aside. The second set of schemes are schemes where states and central government share. So for instance, the ICDS is, is somewhere where states and central government share. There an argument can be made that, look, this devolution of 10% is going to help us. But a third set of schemes where this devolution will not help are schemes which are 100% centrally sponsored. Take the midday meal program. Food inflation has gone up. The cost of feeding children is not going to go down. From 16,000 crores, you've reduced the budget to 9,000 crores. And, and, and the state, states, states will not bear. No, it. states are not expected to bear because it's a 100% centrally sponsored program. Number one. Number two, even in those where the states and center share, let me read out what their own minister, Maneka Gandhi, because you reduce the budget of the ICDS from 16,000 crores to 8,000 crores, writes to the finance minister and says, that this will result in a situation where the focus is lost or in critical programs related to malnutrition for children, nutrition for pregnant and lactating mothers. I am afraid to point out that the political fallout of such a situation can be grave. These are not my words. This is, these Sambit, are the words of a cabinet Sambit minister. 54% fall in ICDS allocations for infant, young child and pregnant mother feeding and a 30% decline in allocations for school feeding, for midday meals. How do you explain that? And these are two which which is not covered by the increased uh, you know, devolution of funds from the state centre. The state has to understand that with the kind of kitty that has been reduced, the centre's kitty has been substantially reduced with this devolution. Whatever we have, we have expended in a very judicious way. We cannot get money from outside to exactly fit into everything. Whatever the centre had, the centre has judiciously expended and I would say the state and the centre will have to work in tandem with this kind of arrangement where every sector is looked after. Nitin, Nitin, how would you look at this? You know, the, the, the argument that devolution, increased devolution under the Finance Commission recommendations will take care of all the, uh, you know, shortfalls which have, which have come about. See, Girish, I'd suggest that we look at it in two ways. One, there was a political compulsion for BJP and now NDA <coughs> when they came in of making these big bang announcements about what they would do in the social sector. So, I would look at the 100 smart cities, I would look at Swachh Bharat, etc. all as part of these big bangs. Now, unfortunately, there's no plan to where they want to go with this and what's happened is now you have several big bangs without the buck behind them. 
So you've left the NDA holding these big events that they want to hold and yet there's no process to follow through because there's no money to follow through on the processes. Now, even on the money that's been transferred to the states, it's been done in such a haphazard manner that most of the states have drawn up their state budgets already for the year. They had no clue how the monies would come through, where they would have to additionally give more, take on more burden than the center was receding away from. The other element that you see, especially in the health sector, is a greater movement towards dependence on the private sector through the insurance system. This is beginning to happen and you can see it's a move which is slightly done on stealth, slightly done because I don't think the government itself is clear how far it wants to go. So it has a health policy that is still in tatters in some ways, yet it's going ahead with a pension based plan which we saw the previous government also do and let it fall apart is done almost the same. You see an insurance plan, you see a Jandhan scheme which again is half hollow, half thought, not thought through so you have a credit line given over the Jandhan scheme which is not really functional simply because it wasn't planned out. So I think part of the problem is it's accepted the 14 Finance Commission report which it should have. There is a great reason why there should be a greater decentralization in the social sector. But it's not really thought through what its own role would be in this changing federal fiscal system that it wants to evolve. If it does want to say that the states will take on war, does the centre have any role left whatsoever? And if it doesn't, then it should say so. So no, that's just like the Panchayati Raj Ministry saying, you know, we really don't have any money, we don't have any mandate anymore and we can't influence the states anymore because we have nothing to give them. Then they might as well shut down. Similarly, they should have at least clearly thought through this process. I think it's been done hurriedly. It's been done only in the name of creating an event around it rather than actually thinking how will this fiscal relationship between the states and the centre and the responsibilities change. Is the centre only now responsible for creating more growth and leave the states to do, do the rest of actually the equity and distributional elements as you are saying. Okay. If that's it, the centre should have announced it up front, have said that we are looking at a new centre-state relationship. And part of this, we look at a two-year rollout of these schemes. Now, okay. none of that has happened. And you really don't know any of the social sector ministers if they have, they have a view on this or not. Sambhaj, will you all admit that, you know, there has been a certain amount of confusion. It has been done in a hurry. Where you know, it's not been thought through. Maybe next year we'll do something. You can say that. No, see, it's not that it's being done in a hurry or that there is a set of confusion. But I would definitely say when big things come into being... There is a set of confusion in the initial few years or few months which is bound to happen. I mean the kind of uh, freedom that we have given to the states with the federalism, with, with, the, with, with not only uh, competitive federalism but also the federal structure that we are talking about with Niti Aayog at place in space of the planning commission and all, definitely the federal structure of the country is getting more important. And under such scenario there might be some amount of confusion which would definitely no, in follow fact, into no, no. track in position. Actually, actually Nitin has been a little kind saying that you know there's confusion maybe you did it in a hurry and things sir but there's also another view i'll come back to you but let me let me Anjali let me girish yes if yes. you give me a second i'll yes and yes nitin you know i i have been a bit i have been a bit polite because what will happen in the system is that the poorer states end up suffering more absolutely. than the richer states absolutely states we'll which anyway had no, no, we'll come to that we'll come to that details because they cannot generate the revenue so we'll take come... the case of the northeast states no no we'll come to those details yeah, uh, anjali Anjali, the question is this, that, you know, uh, do you think that the, the argument of the government that, you know, over a period of time now he's saying that maybe a little confusion, maybe it will become better, better next year. You see the focus there now or you see there is a, some fundamental changes in the thinking of this government as far as social sector is concerned? Concern. I think what really needs to be examined is that what is the sort of moral responsibility that the government is taking for certain kinds of things that we know have been flagged time and again over the last many, many decades. If you look at malnutrition amongst children, I think the levels are higher than sub-Saharan Africa and India. In that sort of a situation, can this government actually say that in the name of devolution and the reduced kitty, the spending on ICDS on, on children's schemes is going to actually go down by more than 50% and can that be accepted in a country like India? I think what we also are seeing is that while there is a whole issue of budget cuts and that of course has already been spoken about, we can discuss it much more, but even in places where there was a right to food law that was passed for example, 
only in 11 states there has been a rollout. We haven't even seen implementation happening. And, and these are very, very critical programs where the ruling party, the members of parliament of the ruling party itself are saying, well, these are starvation levels that are being discussed and things need to be in fact beefed up they need to be uh, there need to be much more spending happening in these areas 5 kilograms of ration is not going to suffice per person and even that is not being rolled out now in the name of though, many though, things though one including of the, one of the, though one of the better state government which is implementing that scheme happens to be a BJP government in Chhattisgarh. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think that then Madhya the Pradesh. Madhya Pradesh, Pradesh and therefore I think that the question becomes even more pressing that why is the central government instead of going by what they have been doing in certain states and doing it successfully, going by what they claimed uh, they would do once they came to power before elections, why are they uh, why are they giving up that responsibility? Why are they actually, why are these cuts? And I Sambit, think in... In fact, as far as the social security is concerned, the government is working day in and day out to see that most of the people in the society are in fact secure. And that's the reason as to we are seeing a, from a movement from an unpensioned society to a pension society. Pradhan Mantri Jandhan Yojana is an inclusive yojana. Definitely with all these steps, to say that the government is not concerned about the social sector is absolutely wrong. As far as the food security is concerned, we had seen in the yesteryears also as to how the money has been pilfered and the money that was supposed to go to the right person never went to the right person. And with the direct transfer benefit now being planned to go to the account number, definitely that would save a lot of money. And in fact, the prediction is a huge amount of money that the government would be not saving. So. And who, who, for whom would we be using this? Okay, let, no, Anjali, just, one second, let, let Anjali, I'll come to you. Huh? I'm really you glad, to I'm really the, glad no, that Dr. Patra this direct brought benefit this transfer issue is something with Aadhaar, you know, link it to Aadhaar, direct benefit transfer. All the problems will be solved or 90% of the problems will be solved. I'm really glad that Dr. Patra has brought this up. This whole issue of things not reaching where they are supposed to reach, not reaching and beneficiaries. Pilferage. And pilferage. And, and I think that a lot of us agree that that has also been a problem. Now, when the government came to power saying that there is a lot of corruption, entitlements don't reach people, there was an there was a genuine uh, expectation that the government will do something to correct it. And right. a government which says, na khaunga, na khane dunga, I think what we are seeing, however, on the ground today is ex the exact opposite of that happening. If you look at any mechanism for complaints and grievance redress, what has the government done in the last one year, which would make us believe that the government was serious about ensuring delivery of services? We all know that in this country, if people don't get their entitlements, whether it is ration or it is pensions, we have actually done studies on whether pension, we are talking about direct benefit and cash transfer, whether pensions reach bank accounts or not, and they don't. If the government was serious about ensuring delivery of all these services, including cash, then the government would have set up a system by which if somebody doesn't get their entitlement, they have a very strong system of grievance redress, which would make sure that within 10 days, 15 days, the complaint is heard and the person is able to get their entitlement. The government has been totally silent on it. A bill that was there in the parliament lapsed with the dissolution of the last Lok Sabha. The government promised that it will bring it back. It has not been reintroduced. Okay. No, I think... No, no, no Biraj, yeah. my question is this. Is there a, do you see a larger change in the in, in the approach towards this. I, I think there is a there is certainly a fundamental change that we are seeing with the present government. And that change is the deprioritization of social sector spending uh, by giving a greater push towards infrastructure, towards jobs, towards growth, with the belief that it will trickle down. Now this trickle down hasn't happened in 60 years. The theories of trickle down have been thoroughly discredited and yet there is a persistence with this. So you know there is and I'm and I'm not saying that Nothing positive has happened. I am extremely happy that, you know, a Prime Minister is speaking about Swachh Bharat in terms of sanitation program. But, you know, this Swachh Bharat but is going to sweep away the, you know, the entire social welfare architecture of this country. No, but Swachh Bharat, the, 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 the unfortunate thing is you, you talk of Swachh Bharat, but the allocation to the drinking think, water sanitation you know, I, has come down drastically. And I, I think, you know, the way of doing business in the social sector is dramatically changing. You have a Prime Minister who on the floor of Parliament discredits the flagship program of the previous government, the NREJ, by saying, I will keep it alive just to show you down. What happens? 12,000 crores of unpaid wages for the last one year, 6,000 crores have been disbursed. 6,000 crores have not been paid to you're the talking, poorest workers of the country, the NREJ. 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 Now look at, I agree, Sambit says, you know, Food Security Act we would have done. 
it has been unconstitutionally extended. The act says that it will be done by September 2014. If you are extending that date, you have to go back to parliament and seek an extension. It has been extended thrice by executive orders, which is blatantly illegal. If somebody goes to court, they will get immediate relief. Number three, in terms of the institutional architecture, you are not making critical appointments, which can hold people accountable in the social sector. Right to information, this government came to power riding on the back of a wave of corruption. You have no appointment of the Central uh, Information, uh, information Commissioner. Chiefly. You have no uh, appointment of the CVC. Now, if there is intent, that intent is not being reflected. How and you, I think, therefore, this government is going to pay a political price if there is no that mid-course is correction. That's, that, that's I, their, I, I would, that's say, their, I would uh, say there's a lot of disinformation all around and information would dispel the uh, whole thing. I mean, as far as the appointment to key positions are concerned, the CVC and the CIC, we are all aware of the fact that the CVC, we are going ahead with the appointment when the whole thing went into the court. And the court said that you have to take the leave of the court if you want to make an appointment. The court and only recently leave. the court has given the order that, well, yes, the government can go ahead with the appointment. As far as the CIC is concerned, we always had stood with the fact that there should be a transparent method of appointment. Previously, the system was the senior most IC, the information commissioner, used to automatically become the CIC once the CIC retires. But we formulated a structure where you have to advertise in the newspaper and on the basis of the talent of the concerned one person... One year, it has taken one year. One year. No, no, no. One one year. April last, till April 27th, the last process was going on. I mean, the selection and the sub-selection was going on till April 27th. It's hardly one month. I believe in a few days, the CIC also would be in place. I think... No, no well, sorry. Uh, but, you know, the, the, the other important question which Biraj raised, is there is there a philosophical change in the attitude of the government towards social sector. You think that social sector is not a priority, it's not just bad. Many people are saying that your government, in your government, it, it seems as if social sector is not a priority sector. No. You have, your priorities are different, your priorities are different and hoping that it will trickle down. The contrary to what Mr. Biraj is saying, I would say just oppositely, that the Prime Minister's first word in Parliament were ye garibon ki sarkar hai. This is a government for no, the poor. No, and that's the reason as to why social sectors can never be kept at bay. They are worked upon. And as far as Manrega and all is concerned, yes, we had seen as to how asset performation, I mean, asset creation was not the priority of Manrega and we want that assets should be created. No, that but what has been done to the, exactly. towards it's been one year. What has been done no, towards the direct, no, I believe... Talking, we have been hearing for the last 8-10 months that, you know, the Manrega, it is, assets are not created, so we should create assets. What is the concrete step? No, I believe the most that? concrete step is the Pradhan Mantri Jandan Yojana, which allows everyone to have an account where the whole money goes directly to the account. And this stops the pilferage that we were saying. If you had a higher allocation and most of the allocation was going down the drains, what was the use of the allocation? 30% of the allocation very, very quickly, down the drain. Very quickly, in one year, we have only... See, this is a 12-year-old program to give bank accounts. After 12 years, we have a result where we have 150 million bank accounts in a country of 1.5 billion. Now, forget that. What is the major issue confronting the government over the last three months? Farmers' crisis. This they have brought upon themselves. Now, giving of the MSP, the hiking of no, minimum support price, is the prerogative of the central government. It's not happened. No, that, that, states that, were giving bonus. You wrote to the state saying, don't a, give bonus. That's so a separate, then how we, does no, it we will, we will, That's a separate discussion. Yes, yes. Yes, Nitin, you want to come in. Because Sambit raised the issue of Jandhan accounts, I'd like to yes. specifically focus on that. Now, we've done work showing how half those accounts are pretty much empty at the moment. The numbers have been coming down, there's been some money infusion into it. The second part of really fin fiscal inclusion and financial inclusion is having money in those accounts. The third part is having credit. As work by my colleagues Ishan and Jayashi would show, only about 40,000 accounts actually ever got overdraft under these accounts so far. The amount has, which has been offered as overdraft at a time when there's a crisis. No, but in uh, sorry, sector, Nitin, Nitin, Nitin. Only a, adds up to only about 2 crore rupees. No, no, Nitin, Nitin, now, Nitin wants, sorry, sorry to intervene. But you know, the Sambit's, Sambit's point was different. He said that why, as far as Manrega is concerned, why there has been, uh, you know, a delay or in, a slowing down of, the, of those things. He says that... We are, we are, you know, what, have, what has been done to create assets, make it a more asset-creating program. He says that, you know, we are creating this architecture of Jandan okay. Yojana. Girish, so, no. how is Jandan Yojana going no, to no. impact or help 
help you know improve the is. asset creation under the manrega that is the question the asset creation would definitely be different no. what i was saying the pilferage no, no, would stop and pilferage would stop and you will two, okay unfortunately how jandan how jandan yojana will jandan yojana help manrega will jandan yojana help manrega let me tell you what they've done with manrega let me tell you what they've done so far with manrega what they've done is they said we'll restrict it and we'll focus on the poorest districts more which is fantastic if you wanted to what they've done is they've in almost doubled the budget for the poorer districts at the cost of all other districts now the overall pool is the same there's a long due uh, money Six that they had to pay for the previous wages. year which they've not accounted for the overall budget has been kept the same the labor cost for this year because they're linked to inflation rates they've gone up literally what they've done is choked manrega out of business in most of the other districts now take the own case of punjab haryana rajasthan where the poorer districts do not exist as per the index they have therefore there is little work available in those areas now if they wanted to create assets you have to put money behind your schemes you really can't talk get the bank without the buck in this case they're just looking for too many banks and there's no money backing them up okay. and yes, that's where the problem begins once okay. you have the money then you can say where okay. to build on it but okay. right now there's no money okay okay let nitin. me just add to what nitin was also saying see both narega and pensions are in any case historically schemes where there was cash transfer there yes. is no kind of transfer in and kind in the first accounts. place and these are all uh, uh, places where we have seen pilferage happening but these were all places where money was supposed to be transferred to the bank accounts of the, the beneficiaries the bank was essentially so, you know a bank account transfer, 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 transfer into bank so account so to say that the jandhan is being done to curb corruption in some of these schemes i think it's very misleading the second thing is that if one looks at how have the poor how have the marginalized typically been holding the government accountable to ensure that they get their entitlements it is through things like the right to information an analysis of rti applications shows that most people are just filing applications on these basic schemes to ensure that corruption goes down what has the government done to strengthen this kind of decentralized monitoring let, by let, people let, 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 what, let me just finish girish what we are seeing is that there is a dismantling of all institutions which decentralized monitoring which decentralized vigilance which decentralized power into people's hands to say look things are not happening well in our remote parts of our country we will doing we are seeing also a huge centralization of the function of vigilance and monitoring which is totally counterproductive for all social development schemes uh, answer that the, the question is almost similar as to why the cic has not been appointed i believe because uh, it was no, about no, it an rti about no no she asked no. about the rti and as to why the rti My queries have not gone on because of the unappointment of CIC, to which I have already answered a transparent process. No, that, that's not the point. The point the, that's not the point. The point is that you know these allocations have come down. You are saying that you know they have they have pointed out that this, as far as the central government schemes are concerned, they don't they don't get any funds from anywhere else. So that that has been cut drastically. We have seen 50 percent cut in the you know women, women and child welfare schemes, ICDs, and the 50 percent cut. You are not explaining why the, why the, no, how no. how we are going to make I, up for that. No, I have basically explained the fact that most of these cuts are because of the devolution But, that we have seen. But on a larger picture, I would say that the government is doing fantastically well on the economic sphere. And at the end of the day, it is about the economy which grows, and with the growth of the economy, the and social sector. That's for the trickle down effect. Fed. Essentially, you are talking about right, exactly. Yes, yes, Nitin, very issue. quickly. You know, Girish, Girish. Girish, if I can come in, this yeah. seems like a typical male macho politics <laughs> that brought them in, which suggests that we'll do growth, we'll build the roads, and the development will be taken care of as by the states itself. This is not the federal relation that you talk of when you say we'll have a better federal system. You would have said we'll handle together, we'll give you greater space, but we'll also help you build your capacities. Here, what the center is really saying is. you know we are in charge of the 9% growth you take care of the rest of the country it really doesn't work like that this is not devolution of space power and rights even so, to the state so sabed what you so no what you are trying to say is the question which i asked him and asked you earlier also those so there, there is a fundamental different fundamentally there is a different philosophy working here 
पॉलिटिकल फिलासफी वर्किंग जो फंडामेंटल इकोनॉमिक पॉलिसी फिलासफी वर्किंग नो नो जो फंडामेंटल क्वेश्चन इज वेदर द फेडरलिज्म इज स्ट्रांग इनफ टू सी टू इट दैट वी डू नॉट वर्क अगेंस्ट ईच अदर एट वी वर्क एज अ टीम ओवर हियर द प्राइम मिनिस्टर्स विजन हैज बीन एब्सोल्युटली क्लियर ही हैज टाइम एंड अगेन आर्टिकुलेटेड दैट वी आर टीम इंडिया एंड देयर इज नो बिग ब्रदरली एटीट्यूड एंड दैट्स द रीजन एज टू व्हाई वी हैव सीन द नीति आयोग वन साइज डज नॉट फिट ऑल एंड द स्टेट शुड नॉट बी डिपेंडेंट ऑन द सेंटर फॉर ऑल द मनी रिक्वायरमेंट्स दैट द स्टेट हैज द स्टेट कैन हैव इट्स ओन plan of development and we have to see how one, how one one last point one last very quickly point. Is, governance cannot be all television no vision so far in the first year this government has demonstrated that we we may have a very articulate prime minister who makes a good copy but that does not translate into reality if you do not deliver like you had we'll talked to the farmers we'll wait for that you will have okay, to wait very see. quick last words it's all vision and it's all vision it's all vision and that's the reason as to why the television picks it up okay you think that television picks up because there is vision we'll have to wait we'll wait and watch because you know this one year we'll wait for the coming year, in the in the coming year what what will happen and how it will if it will improve and if it improves how it will improve we'll wait and watch thanks to all my guests please keep watching we'll continue with this sector wise discussion on the one year of nda government please keep watching